Hello and welcome back to Match Day Matinee, the show where we take a look at the cinematic takes of the beautiful game. I am your host for today, Adam, and I'm joined as ever by Mark. And we have a very special guest, the man who likes to celebrate the mediocrity in everything he looks at. It is CPL Wooden Spoon. Very pleased to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, um... You picked today's movie, so we have that to thank. So anyone in the comments or anything, or hit us up on Twitter, wants to know why we have transferred to this type of movie, they know who to blame, right? At CPL Wooden Spoon. 100% correct. So before we kick off, guys, I was curious, uh, in a non-pervy way, what are you wearing? So today, I'm wearing my uh, Brentford Football Club Corrupt FM t-shirt, not only to celebrate Brentford being in the Premier League for the first ever time, but also, not that they need my promotion, but Corrupt FM's movie, uh, People Just Do Nothing Big It Up in Japan or something, I think it's what it's called, uh, it just came out today. If you can watch uh, People Just Do Nothing on Netflix. And you like the likes of The Office, it's a really good show. Still no Canadian release though. Still no Canadian release. It does have, it is confirmed it has a digital release this year. Oh, so no, hopefully right. when it's done in the cinemas, maybe we see it on Netflix or something. Yeah. Is that more of like a jersey or does it have like the actual jersey material? No, it's, a, t- it's a t-shirt, yeah. T-shirt? Yeah. It's not that bad. But it's nice material, it's nice quality t-shirt. Yeah. Um, I actually had to go to Tip Top Tailors to get it uh, adjusted because they only had four XLs left, so I needed it tapered in. So I paid the money to get it tapered. How much did that cost? It's not a bad idea. It's like 30 bucks. That's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. It's not really worth it. Like yeah. 25, 30 bucks. I was getting a bunch of pants done anyway, and then I was like, oh, I'll just throw this in and get it done because it was way too wide. Now yeah, it looks like a normal pricey. t-shirt. But yeah, yeah, bit pricey. Uh, Mark, why don't you tell me what you're wearing today? I am wearing the 2020 Pacific FC uh, Away Kit. I think they were called the Community Editions or City Editions, one of those two. Um, it's pretty cool. It's got like the Fist Guard lighthouse on it. Uh, probably my favorite of the CPL kits. PC, PFC's color combination is like, I think, best in the league, I'd say. The teal mm-hmm. and purple. I agree. Um, yeah. And it's, it's been nice, man, going back to soccer games and yeah seeing you in person right i think i <laughs> know yeah it's really yeah. strange like, oh hey yeah i've kept it up a clip of like at least one game a week two if you include my daughter's uh peewee league um which is also entertaining more entertaining than tfc games these days <laughs> but yeah man it's been good i've been able to wear my jerseys in person that i've been collecting for the last year or so yeah i need to start wearing some of these i've slowly collected over the last year yeah, right yeah. impressive <laughs> feels amazing oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, Wooden Spoon, what are you wearing today? Uh, I am wearing an original logo Toronto Lynx wow. <laughs> or, uh, t-shirt, I guess. Uh, that is back something in the else. <laughs> yeah. I would yeah. always see like the, the Toronto Lynx logo in the newspaper when they were just advertising stuff. And that was soccer in Toronto at that point, like in the GTA. It was. It was. This, this was the team. Yeah. And nobody talked about it, right? It was no one like, talked about it. We have a soccer team called the Lynx and... It's like a secret handshake. I, I consider it a secret handshake. Like those who like yeah. give me a nod to the shirt, I'm like, all right. You know. <laughs> a lot of legends came from that. We're like, I know D row for sure, but then I was just talking about. Yeah, we were just saying whilst you were getting a drink. Yeah, like uh, a Tiba too, maybe. Uh, I don't know if Tiba was on a man. Tiba was on York Region Shooters in right, CSL. Yeah, there was another guy. One of the which I had his kit for York Region Shooters, by the way. Nice. <laughs> it may have been Junior Holia, I think. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. right. Yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. He was one of those, one of that generation, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Should we crack on and talk about today's movie then? So, today's movie is the 1999 classic Soccer Dog. A soccer Beauty. lover and his wife adopt an adolescent and meet a stray dog that can play the game. It was released in July of 1999. It's rated a PG. It's allegedly a comedy, a drama, and a kid's family film. It is directed by Tony Giglio, who, from what I can tell, directed nothing else. And it is uh, written by Daniel Foreman. It is he directed out- the Doom sequel. He directed the Doom sequel? Doom yes, he did. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, <laughs> Which I, I think that. they made just to keep the rights. It was like a trash bin movie. Oh, I think one of called. those. Okay. Yeah. Well um, researched. So yeah, um, I the only other cast member I really noticed was the um, 
coach of the team. Yeah, Sam McMurray, man. Yeah. Doug. <laughs> Chandler's boss. I spent the longest time thinking, where the hell do I know him from? And realized I just knew him for, as a doctor from Breaking Bad. He's literally in two episodes. Oh, I didn't know that, man. Yo, he's Chandler's boss and friends, too. Was it? He's yeah. been in, like, I've seen him in tons, tons of, of things, but yeah, I, could, I couldn't name a single yeah, thing that he's exactly. been. Yo, he was the voice of Roy in Dinosaurs. Like the really? TV show Dinosaurs. He's Which Roy. Which Roy? The dad? Yeah. That show holds up. I've been watching that yeah, show. Yeah, that show holds up. It's still yeah, good. It's got a bit of an edge to it. But yo, uh, the other cast member, Olivia Dabo. Yeah. Yes. There you the go. The coach's wife was she only popular like North America? Uh, yeah, I think I think they were riding that Friends wave. Like cause this came off of Friends. Oh, and she <laughs> was on Friends too. Yeah, yeah. Ah, and she's in another soccer classic, The Big Green. Oh. Oh. Shoot. Available on Disney Plus. Yeah, and I feel like she, it to me. she had a breakthrough in like I want to say like Crocodile Dundee or something. I don't think it was that, but Conan the Destroyer, maybe. <laughs> no, it was, it was some other movie because I think she's Australian, so she had like a bit of exotic flair to her, but like just enough not to make people uncomfortable back she's in the nineties. She's actually English. She was born in London. Is she? Can we yeah. talk about how uncomfortable this movie is for Italians? <laughs> <laughs> we will get there. <laughs> So good. Okay, <laughs> let's uh, roll into our quick pon- uh, plot synopsis before we talk Go about our highlights of the movie. So Clay is a young boy who is adopted, leaving the clutches of an even orf- evil orphanage mistress who struggles to connect with his newly adopted father, adoptive father, who just wants to have a son to play football with. Unfortunately, Clay is not only upstaged by the titular soccer dog, but is also called a variety of names such as Nancy and Manny for no reason at all. <laughs> We get a dumb American coach who spent the entire movie wondering who he was and realized he was a doctor from Breaking Bad. He says soccer is called baseball in the UK. I can confirm it's not. <laughs> Turns out the soccer dog can play. There is a mafia dad who tells one of the players to drug a player. As apparently match fixing little league kids football is cool. For whatever reason, the, pl- the player gets drugged and can't continue. And for whatever the reason, the ref won't let them play with a man down. There is no replacement player available. And he cunningly says, if as long as you can find a warm body, lo and behold, <laughs> up steps Lincoln the dog, and boy, can he play. We get a quick rules check with a dusty old book that is far too big, and it turns out the rules say dogs can play. The ball goes to the dog, and at first he is not interested before eventually snapping into action and nodding in a rebound and follows it up with another goal. We get a they win the game 6-2 and we get a montage of goals when he isn't busy scoring goals he's also scaring children he becomes famous but the dog catcher who held him previously is still after him we see a bully in a store who says you can buy a scrub new shoes but you're still a scrub that was the funniest line for some reason (laughs) i found that really funny uh we get a side story about a weird disgruntled news reporter and we get her who tell, retells the origin story of Lincoln, but it's completely made up through uh, archive footage of other dogs in black and white. We learn shortly after this, for no reason at all again, that Lincoln has been neutered, so he can't procreate with any of the neighborhood's <laughs> dogs. Uh, Clay is half an hour late for dinner, and his adopted dad gets upset, thinking he has no fun with him. Clay <laughs> comes in speaking like his boy, his friend Vince, and it's ridiculous. He calls his parents babies and not to sweat it. It's absurd. He is sent to his room for how he's acting. (laughs) This leads Clay to decide that the entire town is insane. But actually, it's him that is sat talking, having a full-blown conversation with a dog. Clay gets left on the bench for a game and walks off upset. He has an argument, and Lincoln also leaves. Now, this is where I kind of got lost a little bit. Despite two viewings, I don't remember how the dog gets taken by and how they discover the um, miss it. The collar's been cut, but that does happen. So he's been stolen by the dog catcher. Then the boy becomes like a savant. He's like, wait a second. When Lincoln disappeared, I did see a car pulling away. And then the dad's like, what was the plate number? And he can just remember it. So he couldn't D-master. remember the van. D-Master, yo, D-Master. <laughs> and then they go rescue the dog. And uh, he's Paul dad, from Twin Peaks. Yes, he is from Twin Peaks. That is one character as well. Yes, he's the mystery. He's um, Laura Palmer's like secret boyfriend in Twin Peaks. Yeah, yeah. Um, spoilers for Twin Peaks. <laughs> um, so they go and confront the dog catcher. At this point, we realize that the dad knows kung fu <laughs> as he finds with the dog catcher. Uh, they escape and go to the game. Clay has to go and goal, much to everybody's dismay. But it turns out he's actually good at catching a ball. Uh, 
the previous bully that we saw before has his own evil dog who isn't playing but takes out Lincoln. <laughs> Cue another montage with some sort just, of Rocky sounding music. Just t bones the dog. <laughs> yeah, just t bones the dog and like wins him and he can't play. <laughs> Puts the dog in, right? Um, Lincoln <laughs> finally comes around and can play. They win the game. Uh, Lincoln gets reunited with his real family and it turns out his name is Kimball. Just what a shot. At the end of that movie when that happens. Yeah. And it's just out of nowhere. It's just like, oh, the dog catcher didn't take him legally. Here's his real family. Clay is really oh. upset. Um, but we get and we get one of those montages that you get at the end of like teen comedy movies where it's like, what's everyone up to now? About a whole host of back <laughs> characters who you do not give a shit about. But at least you know what they're up to now. Okay, but um, hold on. That, the couple that was in bed when they said they were too busy dining in to worry about the fire, who were they? They were in the crowd throughout the movie. They were just, yeah, they were just crowd and people. That <laughs> woman in particular got overly excited every time like a goal went in. You saw her numerous times oh. through the film. Um, and the like quality the of the movie was so bad like the the copy yeah. that we got yeah. was like 360p I thought that was the kid's mom the entire time <laughs> <laughs> yeah she was feeling she was like secretly having an affair yeah uh, I, think, I think there should be a note that we did period correct DVD rate. yes we did <laughs> um, so the movie ends with them getting a new dog from a dog breeder so the soccer dog's uh, successor is set up the credits roll, and we're treated to another rendition of the m- song Super Rad. By oh, Aquabats, Aquabats. Man. <laughs> A song, I will point out, Shazam did not know. I had to Google the lyrics to double Dude, check who it was. I had Aquabats shirt to the kid, man. Maybe this movie was speaking to me, but like, that Super Rad? Who would have heard that? That's like, that gets I my attention the, again. I knew the song, and I could not remember the artist. So that's the only reason I needed to use Shazam, because I was like, I know this song. Who is it? I thought it was Time and it's the only song. It's the only song in the movie. <laughs> they play yeah, it like three times. Yeah, they play like two or three times. I thought it was Time Bomb by Rancid. It's got like the same kind of oh, tune okay. to it. It's like, it's definitely it 90s does. Scott. It does. Yeah, yeah. It dude. It just, it, this movie is like the pinnacle 90s, like, oh, like Orange it's, County. It's pretty sick. Yeah, they got like, they have a ripoff, a knockoff version of Belle Biv DeVoe Poison. <laughs> oh my God. Games. Dude, I wrote that in the note. Yeah, I literally yeah. wrote that in the note. <laughs> and then they have a knockoff of like the Rocky theme too at one yes, point. Yes, the Rocky yes. theme. Yeah. 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 During one of the montages, I'm so yeah. glad you picked that Bell Bib DeVoe. That's deep cut. Yeah, it's pretty good. All um, right. so before we start talking about highlights, <laughs> I'm not going to beat around the bush. I d- d- detested this movie. In <laughs> some alternative world, in some parallel universe where this podcast is called Mutt Matinee, and we're <laughs> ranking the best football m- or the best dog movies, I can, one. Say, I can safely say. Off the top of my head, I know five better dog movies. And I'm going to tell you what they are now. Beethoven, Turner and Hooch, Benji, Hunted, mm-hmm. The Shaggy DA, and K9. They're all oh. better than this film. Yo, right. what's that one with Otis? Otis and the cat. Oh, uh, Way Home? Homeward Bound? No, 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 man. The, the pug and the cat. Otis and something. Let me look it up. Yo, they're the dog movie that rules. Oh, man. Uh, Adventures yo, but of it, Milo and Otis, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Milo. There you go. 1986 adventure classic. See you guys, um, Mark. What do you think of this film? Man, like I know, I know, Spoon. You came in here with the intention of like a drunken uncle bearing gifts, like <laughs> trying to sabotage our podcast on purpose. But I love this movie. I thought it was like I, I did, found I, myself I, laughing at so many parts. There were so many thank comedic you. moments in it that were great. Thank um, you. The stereotypes of like the little Italian kid, I loved it. It had a decent story. Um, and you know what? Like, it's a shame that they went for a kid friendly movie because if they had gone on like the hard art, this movie would have been amazing. It would have been like cult classic. Like, I'm thinking I agree like three a hundred percent with everything um, you're saying. Like, if they had made this, if they had leaned into it, like um, Super Troopers, what was that? It was called Broken Lizard, I think. Like that Broken commentary. Lizard, yeah, the commentary. Yeah, yeah. Like, if they had made this like a beer fest or like a Super Troopers type movie, yes. and leaned into those elements, this movie would have been. And they kind of did with the ref. The ref was like yeah. that character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the the um, Arlie Army. What's this, that movie? Oh, like, uh, no, Apocalypse Now. Uh, Sergeant Hart. Hartman. Hartman. Apocalypse Now, isn't it? Like yeah, the, yeah. It's, it's yeah, Apocalypse yeah, yeah. Now. It's Hartman. It's Sergeant Hartman. Sergeant, okay, yeah. Like, if they had leaned more into that and like. There's already some like risque elements in it, but if they had gone full on that, oh man, this movie would have been even better. But I enjoyed this movie. This is like, this is but, like far you. from being the worst. Yeah. We've wow. seen much worse movies than this on the map. We have seen worse movies in general. 
Yeah. It's the I worst, it. but it's like the best worst. I guess that's yeah. what I was trying to advocate here. I wish they had gotten a better main actor, uh, the dad, not the kid. I, I don't even remember what the dad's name is. The Twin Peaks guy. Uh, but no, the Twin Peaks guy was not the dad, was it? The yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. man. Stepdad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh stepdad. Yeah, yeah, stepdad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's yeah. called James Marshall. James Marshall. So he was in a movie with Cuba Gooding Jr. in the 90s. That was like his biggest movie. Uh, uh, what's, uh, what's it called? Uh, ba, 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 a Few Good Men? A Few Good no, Men? No, no, no. Oh, did no, not? No, no. no. It was a boxing. Uh, Gladiator. It's called Gladiator. Gladiators. Oh, okay. okay. I think it was well, called I'm Gladiators. Glad, I'm glad you appreciated it. It, I, uh, it takes a special kind of person to watch that movie <laughs> and get through it. Yeah, nice. you're right. He's in a boxing movie called Gladiator. Yeah, please. Wow, I was not expecting this. Well, what about what about the baby guy? Like the baby guy with the wing with the girl. Oh, I best scene, best scene in the movie, possibly. <laughs> yeah, uh, the one of the worst scenes though in this movie easily is when he's having the conversation with the little Italian kid, <laughs> and they just keep calling each other baby and daddy, and you have no yeah. idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah, like, he's like, oh, I'm not yeah. wearing a diaper. <laughs> like kids didn't talk like this in the nineties. Oh, I didn't think they no. did at least. And it's like they just like I guess tried to lampoon it a bit. No, like one kid says something like, "Oh, that was the bomb" or something I, like that, I, and the other no. guy gives him crap for it. But kids did talk like that. Though. Yeah, that was I honestly thing. feel like the CSL made this movie. It feels like the CSL. <laughs> <laughs> like a... yeah, um, we're good. I was going to say they just bully. The kids just seem to bully each other in this film for like anything. The, dude, the, like, dad, the, dad, anything. the dad adopted a kid to bully him into <laughs> yeah, to bully him okay. into playing football. But even before that, what was the kid's name that came back to get the dog? Templeton or something like that? Templeton, yeah, yeah. Was it Templeton? Yeah, it was. He doesn't deserve this dog back. Like, at the very beginning of the movie, he takes the ball and he throws it at, like, heavy machinery, and he just watches Lincoln go and get the ball and smiles. But he smiles about it as Lincoln's going towards this, like, excavator or something. So, he doesn't deserve the dog back. I'm sorry. No, he does not. And and that comes out of nowhere. Like, all of a sudden, it's like, happy ending, boom, heartbreak. (laughs) I texted you at night being like, you need to, like, do some sort of deal with, like, an SPCA. SPCA or something? No, that broke that that was the scene. I was like having a heartbreak. <laughs> oh, right in the beginning? Oh man. So even okay, so many elements to this movie I want to discuss. But the <laughs> one thing is that they're talking about he starts in Pelton and he talks about having a midlife crisis and he has to move <laughs> away. He has to get so far away from Pelton to forget about his upbringing. So he goes to the next town over. <laughs> he's like, yeah. <laughs> he's no. like, I felt like I was miles away, but I was still in my own backyard. He's like, Yeah, man, you could like literally look across the street and see your your orphanage. But then they call this place Crocker Soccer Town USA, but nobody knows about soccer in it. Mm. They have like, no idea. All. Yeah. Have no clue. But I guess that was soccer in the 90s, right? It was like this fringe sport where it's like, I love soccer, but you only know it, like what you make of it, like soccer moms. And, yeah. 100%. And this movie was made for like a specific like HBO 1990s OC, like Orange County, uh, like demographic. This is like the elected. Yeah, it's like a soccer mom, like Alexi Lala's fucking, or sorry, uh, 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 bang man. It's a, uh, it's a whole, it's a whole different world. But like Airbud had already come out at this point, right? Yeah, yeah. This is a complete. This is like okay, this is yeah. a Woodbridge ripoff. I always call this Woodbridge <laughs> Airbud. The, uh, they're riding the the soccer, the sports dog. Uh, wave and the dog the doesn't 90s. even feature in it. The dog has very no. little to do with the whole movie. No, no, it's it's clearly ripping off Air Bud. And then at the very end of it too, when he gets a new dog, it's um, it's a golden retriever, just like Air Bud. A hundred percent. It is, man. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Can we talk about D Master? Oh, it. Go for it. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, tell me other things you like about this movie. So go for it. <laughs> All right, D Master. Do I need to explain anything else? <laughs> Psychopath dog catcher who like eat yo, he eats his ring when he's kissing it in that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he throws the net over the dog and then he kisses the ring, the skull ring. Yeah, that guy is that uh, what a character. And he's and he <laughs> when he's in just the, he's like there's a bit where he's just in a trash can, like a big an industrial trash can where oh, the stone's just like I forgot stuff. It. And he pulled the garbage out of his like collar. <laughs> yeah, and then he's just like looking around, like, "Yep, I can, I know the dogs around there somewhere." Was this guy known from anything else? Because he got special building in the beginning. It was like, and so and so as the dog catcher. 
I looked him up. I, He's in a bunch of like second rate like horror movies and stuff, but there was one good film he was in. I can't remember what it was. Uh, Give me one second. I'll and he's completely emulating Bob from Twin Peaks. Oh, man. I haven't seen Twin Peaks. I'm missing all these references. You are. Yo, he, he is the like the best. Oh, he was in. Spoilers. He was in The Untouchables. Yes, he was. Sean Connery, like gangster film, police film. And then he was also in the. He did Hills. nothing, though. He did nothing in that film. He was in The Hills Have Eyes, the 2006, but otherwise his. Oh, uh, the remake. Yeah, the remake that of that. But otherwise, he's in a bunch of like. He was in like Tremors 4. He's in a bunch of like director video sequels for all sorts of stuff and then like knockoffs of things. I yeah. love the part where he's so defeated by Soccer Dog escaping that he burns his Dog Catcher of the Year awards. <laughs> <in the garbage. laughs> yes! And they're just that like was, the, that, the crappiest like, school attendance certificates you've ever seen. <laughs> that, that's my favorite part, actually. Go back. That is my favorite part. Having a bonfire to burn the Dog Catcher. Why was there a no hunting sign at the, the Dog Catcher? Dude, that's the first <laughs> note. That's the first thing written on my note. Were they hunting <laughs> the dogs? Pendleton Dog Pound. No hunting. Why? <laughs> Who's hunting dogs? Well, yeah, what was the precedent that they had to actually put up a sign saying no hunting? Somebody has been hunting these dogs. Yeah, that guy's sick. All right. Anything else about the dog catcher? No. What about no. the postman who really hated dogs? Oh, that guy. He's next level. <laughs> he comes out of nowhere and finishes yeah. the movie. <laughs> very weird, very, like, closet racist vibes from that guy. Like, they're they're upsetting the... The, the 50s-ish neighborhood. Really weird vibes from that guy. And he comes uh, out of nowhere. He comes out like sexy man. Like, you know, like that, yeah, the yeah, first scene that he's in, he's like a predator. <laughs> See, he would have been a great character in like a Broken Lizard type movie. Yeah. Where he's just like really obscene and this guy comes out, he's really pervy. And you kind of And because it's a it. kid movie, it's like cringy. But if it had it been a work. comedy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, They're not allowed to cross that threshold that like makes it funny. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one of my favorite characters in this movie was the, the shoe salesman who's like really yeah. aggressively talking to him. Right Yo, uh, I, I know vulgarity is not good, but uh, Soprano, he's pussy. <laughs> oh, is he? Yeah. yeah. No, he's not the character, but like that's the character. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the, sorry, not the actor, but like that's the character he plays. Like that's with my head. I imagine that pussy went Jacobia shoe salesman <laughs> and whatever. Talks about Do yeah. you know who this guy is? Like the no, actor? Uh, okay, you... No, I no, I have no idea. Do you know who Greg, uh, Greg Grunberg is? Yeah. This is yes. his brother. No way. No. <laughs> I swear to God. So, like, either this guy's not in on, like, the J.J. Abrams friendship that keeps yeah. Greg Grunberg's uh, career no moving. No way. But, yeah, this is Greg Grunberg. I can't even say the guy's name. Greg Grunberg. Yo, how did they get these people? <laughs> Yo, Sam McMurray and Greg's brother? Like, what's going on? He's like, yeah, he gets sweaty trying to explain the casserole to the kids. And then right before this, there's the kid. This and he bullied the kid, too. He what? Yeah. Well, he, he bullied gave. the kid. Everyone bullies that kid to, like, play soccer. Right, but, okay, even before this. So in the shoe sale or the, the sports store, the, the dickhead with, like, the home improvement haircut goes yes, up to the other kid. And he's like, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Yeah, he's like, is that the last predator? And the kid's like, I don't know. Oh, I yeah. guess it could. And then he nabs it from the kid. But he doesn't even check the shoe size. So that kid is. No, like, he throws it down. No, he throws yeah, it down. But the kid's two feet shorter than him. Obviously, they're not going to be the same size shoes. Maybe they will. Good point. But steals unlikely. the shoe from him. Yeah, just to be a dick. Yeah. Weird T- I think John Arthur Taylor Thomas was doing a lot of cocaine at that time, and he just agreed <laughs> to be in that. <laughs> He's well. Did he do any soccer movies? He must. I oh, can yeah, picture yeah. one of him like sitting, doing like no, that he weird. He was in that post. really racist movie with uh, Tim Allen, where he's like with the stepchild. I don't oh yeah, 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 yeah! Out of Africa? No, not out of Africa. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like the cover yeah, like Tim yeah, Allen yeah. in like an African mask or something. Yeah, what was that called? No idea. Yeah, I, I watched it when Disney Plus first came out. My daughter and I rewatched like all the old '90s stuff. There's one movie called Heavyweights where it's just Dude, like nine, 90 movie. minutes of fat shaming. <laughs> that movie was gnarly. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff on Disney Plus that like doesn't. It's my favorite streaming service. The only one I have to yeah, besides good. one saga. And now with uh, stars, like there's yeah, there's yeah, tons of good stuff. stuff there. Yeah, it's so good. good. This movie's supposed to be on stars. F- FYI to American viewers, uh, stars has this movie on it apparently. Really? Oh. Apparently. Uh, okay. It's VPN, easy. VPN, yeah. VPN for the Canadians. Okay, let's. Uh, I feel like there's one uh, subset of characters we have not properly touched on, and that's the Italians. Uh, <laughs> so good. 
they're just like so cliched and I'm sure Italian friends that we have would not appreciate the stereotyping. If it's not the mafia connotations, it's the greasy hair. <laughs> like, uh, just <laughs> one thing greasers. after another. Yeah. Like, yeah. even the little kid is. The like, little kid, the grease. Lick the, back the little grease. kid, when he loses his shit and he takes off his shirt and he's got the white tank underneath. Yes. And he throws it on the floor. It's like, that was one of the moments where I was like, I like this movie. I, I, I'm not going to hide my shame. So good. It, it's funny. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't like, think it was malicious. Yeah, I, like I know the writer of this movie only has like the one credit to their name, but he fit in like every Italian stereotype, man. So <laughs> good on him, man. He quit. That's why quit I said it was that. like CSL. Like <laughs> it feels like you're watching CSL. I don't know how many people go to CSL games, but are they still, still around, right? CSL, yeah, yeah. I had a game like a week ago. Okay, so CSL for anybody who's listening and doesn't know, uh, if you've heard of the Canadian Premier League. Before that, there was the Canadian Soccer League, which has been around since, like, I want to say 2000s-ish? Uh, well, the, in the Carnation now, yeah. It used yeah. to be CPSL, but, like, it's not really. Right. I don't know. It's, it's, it was, it was Canada's, it, yeah. Canada's National League to the point where, like, they actually had a listing on FIFA's website. Yes. But really, all of their teams were in southern Ontario. And then around, I think, was it, like, 2012? Is that the match fixing? The, yeah, the match fixing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that, I think like 2012 was unveiled that like the entire league was just being fixed by, I want to say like Eastern European match fixers or something. You could say that, yeah. Yeah. So then that blew up. Eventually, League One Ontario started as our third division and then Out of it, yeah. took off from there. Yeah. But so CSL, CSL, you know, CSL throws down with like OSL teams. I don't know. CSL is good, man. CSL has guys that are like 30 ish and like they're working as carpenters and stuff like that. A lot of CPL but at the same players. Time, they're crushing it. A lot of CPL players were in CSL. CSL. Like Emilio Estevez, yeah, he was in CSL. Yeah, uh, CSL's Mo, really good, man. Mo with Metro Star Mo was yeah. in uh, CSL before he got because of his visa issue. CSL is like a containment for Canadians who get into immigration problems. Yeah. So you have a really good basis for football. And with League One, too, I think there's an age limit of, like, two guys over 24 yes. or 23 or something like that. So then, yeah, exactly. a lot of people who can't make it in soccer but still want to play competitively go to CSL. And, yeah, yes. man, like, aside from the match fixing, it was it was really entertaining. And it's still entertaining. I recommend everyone check out Centennial Stadium. There's just too much legitimate soccer now to, to still follow CSL. It's, it's legit now. Like, the people who are doing that are out, man. Oh, really? Oh, 100%. It's, like, legit. They just had a documentary on uh, on being sports uh, for Verkuda. They're trying, to, they're trying to get their image back. I don't know. They'll never be sanctioned by no, like, never any of the out. governing bodies. So that's They'll never be sanctioned, but it kind of makes it more fun. And it's crazy that they still have, like, the Metro's Croatia in it. I guess it's just called Toronto Croatia now, which is, like, yeah. Canada's got, got to be Canada's oldest club. No, it's not. Uh, the, the Newfoundland club. Uh, oh, I can't even remember the name. It's FAA, Fieldins, 18-something. Uh, yeah, but they're amateurs, the old, though, right? Uh, they're amateurs, but they were pro. Like it's it's uh, that fine line between like when yeah. pro leagues, yeah, when like uh, it, it's essentially like saying like uh, I don't know Metro Croatia being uh, one of the old club. Yeah, it'd be cool to get Toronto Croatia back in like League One or something. Like there's so much pedigree there and history. Yes, yes. Yeah. But that's a yeah. That's another story. <laughs> digress for a bit. Yeah. Adam, get us back on track. <laughs> hey, any more highlights? I still don't have any highlights. I'm okay. Still back in my brain. So you tell me some more. I've got a few notes here. Um, me too. The coach, the soccer coach, the Crocker obsessed soccer coach had so coach many Shaw. good lines. Coach Shaw. Coach Shaw. When he's getting the kids like revved up in their first match, out of nowhere, he just drops a boys. I think I met my future ex wife last night. And then he goes off and talks about like <laughs> meeting a woman and taking her home. What a line. <laughs> That line is legendary. Uh, oh, do you know what, actually? Another line, uh, one of his, before I forget it, because there's a few highs, is when they do the press conference for Lincoln and said, yeah. that we've got this ransom money, you won't get a penny of it. And then someone's like, is that just <laughs> monopoly, monopoly money? money? And he's like, no. <laughs> okay, he says, I think I met my future ex-wife last night and I'm going to be on her like a bum on a bologna sandwich. <laughs> um, oh, my God. <laughs> And then he goes on about soccer and he's really trying to get these kids excited about a future in soccer. And he says, if you're good, you can make a lot of money, just not in this country. Yes. 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 Okay. That and that's funny. like, that's the state of American soccer in 1999. Like I think MLS is. was contracting at that point. And yeah. 
Like very yeah. on the nose, yeah. USL Toronto Lynx was that era. That was. Um, there's a part where the dad tries to get him excited about soccer and he says, I thought we could watch some highlights of last year's World Cup. Oh, yeah. And that movie starring Michael Caine and Sylvester Stallone with Pele. How would this kid even know who Michael Caine was? Why would he get excited about that? Yeah. Or reruns of last year's World Cup. Or um, even Pele, really. A kid that's not interested in football is going to be like, who? Yeah, I guess, right? Because he was already done at that point. Yeah. yeah. Like, he was funny on The Simpsons yeah, and, like, there, a camera appearance, but that was He was it. gone for a long time. But yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like, Cosmos was, like, yeah. late 70s at that point. Um, that dad is, like, cheesy. <laughs> that dad's got something. He's got a plan. Like, <laughs> he's trying to get the dopping kids to sell him as players. He's yeah, trying to, yeah. He wants to bulk out a team and then sell them off, yeah. Well, he's like he's trying right. to live out his childhood through the kid. The yeah, totally. Right. But like, it's easier than that. Like, you don't adopt the kid to relieve your trauma. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a part when the the dog first gets dog napped and gets put in the pound, and then the two dogs are staring at each other for like ten seconds. I'm like, oh shit, they're gonna start talking to each other. It's gonna be like a look who's talking situation. <laughs> <laughs> it never happens. But it, it's expectable. That's the best part about yeah, this movie. I was like, oh, oh, this movie's taking a turn, and then it just never happens. It just it, they cut to another scene. That dog tackle is the best tackle I ever thought of before. <laughs> the T-bone. He just, yeah, he just, just butts and brushes him. <laughs> right in the uh, What else do I have in my notes? And I, there was no else? red card. No, like, we didn't even talk about the ref. Like the ref the entire time giving like football signals. Every time they scored a goal, he would do like the, I don't even know what this is called. <laughs> the, yeah. Field goal, yeah, I guess. The, the, the field goal, goal, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah field, field goal, field goal, goal yeah. yeah. Yeah, that guy was, the, the the scene where he has his like wife dishing out the itemized list. Yeah, where he's, like, and he's like, yellow card, yellow card. Yellow card. <laughs> what? And he's what? like wearing it. No, he says, nope. timer, he says timer. Yeah, and he goes, it, yeah. true question, it's a watch. That saw my wife wrist. looked like she was a kidnap victim. <laughs> um, okay, so I think you mentioned this about the kid they keep calling Nancy. I don't know if that's his name, but they <laughs> no, use that no. same joke in like almost every scene. Like they call somebody the wrong name. Yeah, it's a recurring we, joke. And we also didn't talk about there's the um, old people that come to the driving school oh, trying to pass. Their test because they also keep calling Clay the wrong name. Like they call Clay how's they? They're the ones that say how's Manny. Yeah. And so it's just like, what? I don't know why they thought this reoccurring joke of calling kids the wrong name. It happens the entire movie. But yeah. It's never funny. No. Yeah. And that DMV thing is also sort of like a short film within the film because you watch him yeah. escalate. Like, <laughs> he's like signing paper, like, I'm losing it. <laughs> you watch, you're watching first, a man go. When they first, yeah, it turns into like, uh, was it Michael Douglas like falling down at that point? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> comes out the shotgun but at the beginning of the movie they show him like this really nice house and i'm like oh this guy became like an exec or something but then he's just like a desk <laughs> jockey at the dmv yeah and, and that's yeah, like and it's slowly becoming unhinged throughout the movie <laughs> <laughs> i love this movie but oh. only at the dmv <laughs> yeah. and then there's like i'm not sure what david hasselhoff did to like offend anybody in this oh movie, but, i forgot man, that, oh yeah they what chose violence that against that man yeah, yeah. No, like what's the halftime entertainment david yeah. hasselhoff the guy's like Oh, <laughs> why? What did David Hasselhoff do in 1999 that was so terrible? I don't know. Like, he still was Baywatch still around then? I think so. Remember that that like one period where he was eating a hamburger off the floor? <laughs> yeah. That wasn't around now. No, like the internet no, was. Yeah, no, that, no, was no, that was earlier. Yeah. That was earlier. Yeah, I don't know what he did, man. But like, there is a slight against Hasselhoff in this. Movie. Yeah, man. Like this violence against that man. Um. <sighs> I got Dude. okay. So this dog. So here's the problem. Every time Lincoln, you guys, hey, you did the name Lincoln. Lincoln. <laughs> the what? The person's name or thing's name that they never get wrong or they never try to call anything else. Okay, so <laughs> here's my problem. Every time you guys pick an obscure movie, finding thumbnails and a poster to use for like the YouTube thumbnails or like the YouTube promotion, it's a struggle. It's every single time. So I started Googling, like I started trying to figure out what type of dog breed this is because I'm already picturing I'm going to have to make my own soccer dog posters, which I had to do for my summer with this. So it turns out this dog is a Portuguese Padango. Okay. And I was like, ah, ah. Boom, boom. So that's why it's naturally competitive at football. And also <laughs> why the sequel, he competes in the European competition instead of a CONCACAF one. Oh, that makes so much sense. Right? 
because this movie takes place in the U.S. So I'm thinking, why is the Soccer Dog sequel called the European Cup? I had no oh, idea. some attention he's a, to he's detail. Right? Yes. He's a Portuguese national. He also <laughs> sucked at football. I've never seen a dog suck so bad at football. <laughs> Air, Bud where, kill, Air Bud would kill him. But there's a part where they put him on the field, and then they're like, we just need a body on the field. And then the ball rolls up to the dog, and the dog does nothing. Yeah. And then they're disappointed. They're like, oh, this, this dog didn't do the trick. How about the CGI in the movie? How about the CGI? Was there Everyone? CGI? There's no way oh. to tell. The quality is <laughs> so bad. No, there was CGI when he when the dog put the ball. He not make the guy. That is 100 yeah. percent CGI. Yeah, Portuguese dog. You never know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was a part at the end of the movie, at the climax of the movie, where like the guy crosses it from across the pitch, and then the dog get, heads it in, and that's like oh, the winning goal. Yeah. There's no way that dog doesn't have yeah. a concussion. Like, yeah. <laughs> the dog's head is this small. It's like half every, the size of the ball. Every shot the dog takes in the net with a little Italian goalie, like, uh, he just, he, it, it's fixed. It's all fixed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the, it whole, fixed. the whole movie's yeah. fixed, whether or not. I know, but even the ending's fixed. I'm yeah. convinced. Soccer dog, fixed movie. Yeah, he was meant to win. He was meant to win. <laughs> Okay, any other highlights you guys really want to discuss before we move on? No, I'm good, man. I mean, I think everyone in the movie listens to Sublime. I'll say that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, we will move on to number ones at the time. So, number one, the UK number one song of this movie's release was Live in the Vila Loca by Ricky Martin. Ah. A classic. Uh, number one at the box office was um, The Haunting, starring uh, Liam Neeson and Catherine Zeta-Jones. And uh, the best-selling video game at the time involved a different kind of animal altogether. It was Donkey Kong 64 was the best-selling um, video game really? of 1999. Even, like, against PlayStation games? Yeah, I was surprised. I think Dreamcast was that, too. That's the right link. Oh, yeah, really 9 nine ninety nine. Oh, yeah. That's well, that watched. didn't sell any. I bet Donkey Kong sold more copies than they sold Dreamcast yeah. consoles. Donkey Kong had that cool yellow cartridge, but the game yeah. itself was ass. Like, you had I had Donkey Kong every Edition. I had Donkey Kong Edition N64 where the controller looked like bananas. Oh, yeah. They oh. had like uh, the brown yeah. tips too, right? Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that was the height of like uh, 90s 3D platformers becoming too much. It was like collect like 50 coins to do this yeah. to get a banana trade these tokens in for this this man needs feeding these things um yeah, yeah, yeah. i never finished that game back i was in like the day. Yeah, rare games at that time yeah i think that was their last big one before gamecube and then yeah before they eventually they just went off to microsoft yeah yeah, yeah. okay and yeah. football at the time uh, this movie was released just a few short weeks after manchester united won an historic treble winning the premier league mm. the fa cup and famously coming back from 1-0 down in injury time to beat Bayern Munich 2-1. Uh, MLS's fourth season was underway, and this was famous for being the last season which used the 35-yard line shoot-up rule to resolve tied games, and also they lost the countdown timer with the MLS Cup adopting the International Football Association Board standard running clock afterwards. DEC United beat LA Galaxy 2-0 that Dynasty. season to lift the... Sorry? Dynasty back then. Dynasty, yeah, they were the team. So they lifted their third MLS Cup in four years. And finally, in transfer news, Christian Vieri broke the world transfer record, smashing the previous record by 10 million for a move for 32.5 million from Lazio wow. to Inter Milan. Uh, I want to wow. talk about that 35 yard line shooter rule. <laughs> so that, there are, I That's legit. Wild. There are, there are people in England that still think that happens in MLS. Like, they've never got <laughs> past that. They saw that and were like, right, that's it. They've wrecked the game. I don't get it. Um, they'll have seen, like, US. the only part of USA 94 they saw was Diana Ross missing a penalty, and yeah, then they know that this away. happens in MLS. It's Do you like- even cock a cat, man? <laughs> 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 yeah. It was exciting, though. Like, I remember the penalties at Metro Stars games were run-up penalties. Oh, yeah, they were. I'm holding up a blue card for those who can't see from uh, Massel. Autographed ref blue card from Massel. Is that Cocky five the box? No, it's two to five. Two they're, they're ball, yeah, you got, you're the variant. Come on. Do you know your Massel? It was exciting. I'm not like, I, oh, I don't want to go on a whole digression <laughs> about <laughs> indoor right, soccer indoor football, again. Yeah. But yeah, we we had some good times watching yeah, indoor soccer. Arena soccer, actually. It's not indoor soccer because... Indoor with these futsal rules, right? Massel. Correct. That's true. Um, but yeah, so did you guys 
Were you, was it a sad day in MLS, do you think, when the 35-yard shootout rule was abandoned and American sports yeah. fans had to get used to a game being a tie? It was that. It was that. I think that uh, North American football is the best football. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we lost our culture. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that day, that day, day, that was the day. Have you seen goalie wars? Come on, you've seen goalie wars. No. The run up PKs, like a like a shootout in hockey. That was yeah. MLS like standard. Yeah. Well that's yeah, what it was in arena soccer. Are, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You could like dribble around or the and stuff. You gotta watch uh Soccer Slam, which was oh, Soccer Slam, yeah. I think I'm picturing the game. There was a game called Soccer Slam, right? Like a Capcom game? Soccer Slam was wrestling football. It was all We've watched this, narratives. Mark. We've talked about this before, and there was a story oh. and the brown cards and stuff. And Yeah, we wanted yeah. to review that. Toronto yes. Loons. You don't know how much money I spent to get a Toronto Loons kit, an original. I spent more money than I'll ever admit to. Wait, <laughs> that was Soccer Slam? Soccer Slam. And there's soccer, soccer War. Soccer War. Toronto Loons, yeah. Toronto. The, oh, wrestling, you- the wrestling one. Yeah, yeah, there's like storylines and like heels. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah there's like that. four episodes of it up on like Vimeo or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we yeah. should watch that. Eh? Everyone's talking about Ted Lasso right now. We should like do a swerve and review Soccer Wars slash Slam. You have no idea, is. man. I had a, I, I contacted the coach, and then you gave me a player who probably still had one who like highballed me, and I had to give it to him because where else are you gonna get one of those kids? <laughs> How much did you pay for it? More than I'll ever admit. <laughs> I'm picturing like three digits for that. Four. No. Canadian football, man. You got to get it. (laughs) No, there's a limit. Some stuff. (laughs) Um, Okay. So we will move on. I did not make a game today because I'll be damned if I can think of a way to rank sports playing animals. So we will move on to footy flicks. So this is the bit of the show where we talk about our favorite football scenes um, I'll start off and actually say the beginning of this where before Lincoln starts playing, there's actually some kind of okay football on show. Like they don't resort to the trick that they usually do of only showing players' feet. You see quite a few like long range passes. Perhaps there's a bit of ball on a string or CG in action here, but because of the low picture quality, you kind of can't tell. It's kind of okay. Um, there's I'll not agree. a great amount of skill on show, but it's kids playing. So what do you expect? Um, yeah, are there I'll any, are any particular highlights you guys have in terms of footy flicks? I thought the same thing like you were saying, like it was actually pretty good. <coughs> yeah. Sorry. It was, it was pretty entertaining when it started. Like there was that mix of like the nineties hip hop that we were talking about, like the ska music. Um, it's not the worst soccer we've seen on match day, Matt. No. But then as soon as the dog comes in, it all goes downhill. And there was like it- one scene where like, the dog was dribbling, and then I guess they could only get, like, two seconds of the dog doing that, and it just kept on flashing the screen white. Yes. And, like, I'm 100% sure if you have epilepsy, like, you're writhing on the floor after watching that scene. Yes, like it's that might induce, yeah. Also, the fight scene with the, like, stepdad in the fighting D-Master. Like, that fight scene <laughs> in the place, oh. it just choppy. We missed an entire scene where, like, the dog almost gets run over by D-Master in the car. Oh, like, yeah. D-Master's chasing him down, and then the dog does... Like a Miami Vice slide across a, a white car. He slides. He yeah. actually slides in the film. It's there crazy. must have taken a dog and just thrown it across the hood. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, <laughs> any other football scenes that spring to mind that were good? Uh, the one like Dickhead Kid, the Jonathan Taylor Thomas one, like he does like four fouls in a row. Like he never gets oh, called on them. Yeah. Like, yeah the rest that of kid, it getting worse. Yeah. Kind of, that kid the yeah. dick. He does like a two foot of tackle. The ref, I think he blows a whistle at that point. But then in the next play, he like hip checks a kid, doesn't get called. Um, and then that one kid at the end, he's doing a breakaway and like all of the stampeders are coming at him, but not really at him. They're like finding a way to get behind him and then just jumping at nothing. Yeah. The orphan kid is also a good keeper. That orphan kid, yeah. when he figured out oh, yeah, he yeah, a yeah. keeper, those teams, he's got a game. And ironically, the coach at the beginning of the game says using your feet's overrated. Like it's got no place in the game. It's all about hanker and eye coordination. And it turns out, yeah, actually, coach, he was yeah. right all along. He was right all along. Watching like uh, stuff. <clears throat> watching seven-year-old soccer with my daughter. There's so many times when like the kids will have like 
a momentary lapse and they'll just start using their hands. It's, <laughs> it's never not funny. <laughs> like the ball is coming towards the kid and she'll have like the clearest break and out of nowhere, right before the ball comes to her, she'll just grab it and put it on the floor. Uh, the ref blows the play dead and we're just like, man. <laughs> it's going to be our first win this season, but I guess not. Okay, so that's it for Footy Flicks. We will move on to the ranking. Mark, do you have the rankings to hand? I can pull them up. Give me one I second. I don't remember where they are. I tried looking in the drive whilst we were talking ranking and I couldn't one. find them. Spoon, have you seen every movie that we've watched? Uh, every single one except one German one you guys watched. Not so, sorry, somewhat recently. German, German, German. Uh, I can pull it up. We did my that summer with last Dez. season. It was uh, last season. Oh, the keeper. Oh, okay. So we don't need to rank that. In right. this. It would have been the keeper. You yeah. just need to help us rank it in All this right. season. Okay. I'm pulling it up right now. I mean, I'm giving it number one already. So. A fucking right. chance. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. So in the first spot. We have Rudo Ikersi. Oh, okay. In the second spot, looking for Eric. In the third spot, Baggio, the Divine Ponytail. Hold on. I want to pause for one second. Did you guys see the picture of Roberto Baggio wearing a forge hat? Oh, my God. Yes. My proudest moment of my like soccer design career. Can I just say? How did that happen? <laughs> yeah. No one no seems idea. to know how it happened, do they? Like, some, there must be somebody who gave it to him in the world. And... Canadian Soccer World's not too huge. Like Somebody no. needs to confess to it. Who did Someone it? Someone needs to confess. Uh, yeah, he was like, oh, cool hat, and you wore it. Yeah, man, amazing. I showed everybody on you, like like Baggio wearing a hat with the logo I designed. I have it Super screenshotted, bad. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to the table yeah, ranking. Sorry. sorry. First place, Rudy Kersey. Second place, looking for Eric. Third place, Baggio, Il Divine Cadino. And fourth place, My Summer with Des. It's third. So you're putting it above Baggio? Yeah. Adam? You know what? I don't like this film, but it is more fun than Badger. That film was so just charismaless. At least his character in you. this film. Like, Dogcatcher alone is creepy and weird enough. Like, yeah, I think that might be fair. It can't go. There's no way it goes higher. No, no, um, no chance. I, yeah, you guys like this film more than me. If third is the compromise, I'll take it. I don't think it's third. Yeah, third. I don't think it's going to hang there for long. There's got to be better movies out there that we'll do this year. Um, yeah, okay, third. Does does Soccer Dog have a better depiction of Italians than Baggio? <laughs> <laughs> From a certain point of view, yes. How many vests are does there it, in Baggio? Does it have a more accurate depiction of Italians? Uh, no, I, I've... I'm glad you guys went third because you don't even need my vote to place it in third uh, because I feel so dirty putting it above Baggio, but man, this movie's entertaining. Very I entertaining. Like soccer dog. Yeah. Thank you, soccer dog. Thank you, it soccer dog, together. for the memories. It does bring people together. Uh, so CPR Wooden Spoon, thank you very much for joining us. It has thank been you for me. a journey for sure. And for listeners, viewers, this is not the last time we will be uh, looking at terrible movies. Our intention going forward is to cover more terrible movies so we can give out a match day matinee wooden spoon award at the end of every season. Ooh. So you will be joining us along for that ride. Uh, if people want to find you on like social media and stuff, where can they find you? Uh, there's Instagram and Twitter, both at CPL Wooden Spoon. Brilliant. And Mark, where can people find you? On Twitter at Mark83, on Instagram at A3Football. And I believe that's it. Give Spoon a follow. He started yeah. out as like an account to hand yeah, out a wooden joke. spoon to CPL, and suddenly he's turned into this guy who like breaks Canadian news stories and yeah. just awesome. He's a really big in the game of uh, soccer in Ontario. I love it. So appreciate it, man. Great job, man. Thank you, man. And if you want to follow me, it's Joypad Goalpost on social media. And also, don't forget to give our social media accounts a uh, follow Match Day Matinee on Twitter. And Mark has been doing a bunch of graphic work on our Instagram as well. I'm putting it up on there. So Match Day Matinee on there too. Um, oh, Mark's put his hand up. He's got something else to say. Our football friends film pick. Yes. 
Don't forget to check out that video. We had a very special guest covering our football friends pick. And we're going to try and get some more as we go along from other famous friends of the show. Um, so yeah, check that out. It's not just about us ranking films, it's about finding out other people's favorite films. So let us know your favorite picks and go and check out that little short video. Um, and that is going to do it for today. So from the terrace to the theater of dreams, we are Match Day Matinee. Thank you very much for watching. See ya. See ya.